but we're all we're all the same you and me we're the same we're the same yeah. consciousness we're just having different experiences where we're, we've created yeah. different things you know what i just had one thought too that people when they're physically ill or they're physically depressed all that lowers your frequency so i wonder yeah. when they're at that moment of death it's because the higher frequency is pulling from the lower frequency of the physical. Mm -hmm. The physical is like, you know, they're, they can't do it anymore. And then the, the higher frequency, which is going to the source, it has to just separate. I wonder if that's, uh, well, you have to see, okay. So our bodies, our physical bodies really is not really physical. It's just a bunch of molecules bumping against each other in 99% emptiness, empty space. Right. So our, our physical bodies are pure energy, okay? Molecule is just energy. And when uh, a soul is connected, a consciousness is connected to the body, um, it's connected with kind of like an energetic cord. It's, kind, it's almost like, a, I always compare it to an umbilical cord, you know, when you're a baby that connects yeah. you to the mo mother. Mm -hmm. um, I might not say it right, the word, but... Um, you know what I'm trying to say, right? And it's almost like that. That's how the soul is connected to the body. And so what happens is our soul is like a battery and it feeds the energy in the cells. And that's why cells start to split. Okay. Still to this day, scientists have no idea why they do that. <laughs> that's why, you know, when you look at how a baby's made and the yeah. sperm goes inside egg, there's an explosion. <laughs> okay. That's an energy burst that's happening right there and through that it's basically the moment that happens a soul is connected boom okay and so that soul is feeding these cells to duplicate to create to create to create create so when we die basically that cord gets cut we don't cut it we don't think about it it just happens why because your higher soul is like okay we're done here your higher soul cuts it. And so basically the consciousness, your, your thinking, your, your beingness construct continues because your soul didn't die. It's just the body that's dying. It's the vehicle that's starting to die. Mm -hmm. And so what we know is that even the moment the cord is cut. So the moment the soul is separated from the physical body, the physical body actually still continues to fight for its life because every cell in your body has consciousness, your consciousness that you infused it with. Yes. So your body is a self-thinking organism. Okay. It's not as highly vibrational as your soul but it mm -hmm. has consciousness. And so what happens is even if you're declared dead, your heart stopped, your brain is, is basically flatlined. There's no more activity there. You'll, what scientists have seen and proven is that the body continues to live on for two to three more days. It's until every cell basically loses its power. So it'll use up all the leftover life energy the prana that they call you know the life force it'll it'll continue to use all of that just to try and survive 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 until there's no more energy left until the battery is empty and then you know the body um, truly dies so that's really what happens in the death process but from your perspective the body is just it's almost it's, like photons right yeah it's like um battery cells that just it's kind of like your phone it's yeah. like your phone you know if you don't replug it back in it's gonna die and yeah. the plug is your soul that's the the feed it that's the one that feeds it it feeds the body so when the when your phone is unplugged eventually it's gonna die out yes and then you know that's it you're done that's kind of what the, this is. This is our vehicle it is just a, a creation in order to give the illusion of physicality. Well, um, that makes sense when we sleep, because when we sleep, we recharge. Yeah. Right? And why is that? Because the consciousness 
although the soul is still connected, you're not disconnecting until you die. But the consciousness goes home for quite some time, only in the deep sleep, not in the REM. Your, your consciousness is still making up all kinds of stuff that you're working or processing through. But when we go into the deep sleep, there's no hardly any brain activity present. And that's because the soul actually disconnects from the body. Uh, well, the soul, the consciousness takes a break, goes home and hangs out with his loved ones over there. Uh, and then eventually comes back because the body, this is what they told me, my spiritual team, your body cannot rest and recuperate unless you've got the deep sleep, unless the consciousness is out of it for quite some time. And that's mm -hmm. when there's enough, uh, because uh, this, this thinking machine, this processing machine uh, is the most energy consuming item inside our bodies next to the heart. So as long as this is active, there, there's not enough energy being sent to the rest of your body to fully recuperate. And that's why, you know, when people don't sleep for a long, long time, they will actually die. The body will die. We cannot live without sleep because the body needs to recuperate. And the only way to do that is to disconnect. And we do that in our deep sleep. So when it comes to um, death, we really have to learn to embrace the truth about death. Because I think that really can help you with the grieving process. That said, it is important to have the grieving process. It is important to get angry. And it is important to cry your eyes out. And it is important to miss them. And it is important to really go through all of those steps. But there has to come a time where, where you move on and where you incorporate a new relationship where you create a new relationship with your loved one because i've never met a spirit who said yeah keep keep being sad for me please keep crying i've never had that <laughs> every soul is like look i'm still there okay talk to me talk to me i can hear you i can i am talking to you as well just learn to believe what you receive you know yeah. be open for uh, communication you know, be open for signals and signs, you know, spirits communicate in many different ways, music, um, physical signs. I know, I know people who every day they go out, they find something in the shape of a heart, a stone, a leaf, everywhere they're going to see hearts, for example, or every day they find a penny or, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, there's many different ways that spirits communicate to us. But well, I know w when my mother passed away, um, that was my whole beginning of getting signs. Really? I never had them. Well, I had signs all my life. I just, you know, you don't really know if they're signs. You think they are, you feel they are, but there's no confirmation. But after my mom passed away, they were actually, uh, I got a lot of pencil writing messages from her on really? paper. Oh yeah. Like, um, I I'll tell you, I uh, promised her I would clean the, her, her um, bathroom area had these double sinks, you know, and she was a ex fashion model. So she had like all this stuff. And I promised her, I will organize it for you. And you know what? She passed away before I did. So after she died, I organized it for her as if she was still alive. This was like three days after. And one of the last items was a little tiny notebook that I had given to her that was free. It was one of those from Morgan, a shop in Paris. You know, they gave them free little notebook, but it had leopard on it and she loved leopard. So I gave her that and I was just going to toss it in the, the bin. And I thought, no, maybe there's something in there I should keep from maybe the path. So I open it. it nothing's in any pages except for the top page where it had my name and it said, till we meet again then my name for the experience. That's what was written. And I thought, okay, Aww. now how did she know I, I'm the one that's going to be cleaning this and finding that, yeah. right? So that was the beginning. Another thing was I was in the kitchen and there was a stack of paper. She always was recycling all kinds of odd sizes of white paper. <laughs> and I kind of like this. So I thought, I'll, maybe I'll just get rid of the odd shaped paper and keep the organized paper. Yeah. So 
I said, no, no, maybe there's going to be something in these stacks of paper. So I played the game and I went over every single white paper. There was nothing on any and I felt ridiculous, but I'm going to do it anyway. And <laughs> got to the center of them and there was one paper. At the very bottom of the paper was a sentence in pencil that said, in life, you must have faith. Without it, life is impossible. And I was like, go. okay, like, <laughs> how did I know that there might be a message in this stack of white paper? <laughs> Nothing else. That was the only thing in all those white papers. Then there was a fortune cookie in the kitchen that had been there for like three months, you know? I always wanted to open it, but I didn't. And I finally just opened it a few days later. And it was a message about faith. And then I was in the car and I turned on the radio, which I was driving that car for two years. And it was a religious channel that I never ever turned on. So it was this constant message about faith. Mm -hmm. And that's what I kept seeing these messages. Like, what is this? This, this didn't happen in my <laughs> life before. This is obviously my mom. And then after we actually had her um, cremated and had a priest with us in a, in a box in the church, it was like, they put it in a wall and uh, we all finished, my sisters and I, and I was in the car going home and I thought, you know what, mom, I hope you're happy wherever you are, whatever I'm imagining. I wish you could give me a sign, you know? And then I thought I'll turn on the radio and I'll said, whatever song is on now is gonna be your message to me. So I turned on the radio and the song that was on was, because I'm happy da 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 da, da by Farrell. Yeah. And I mean, that was no other way. But she, she was, was happy. happy. <laughs> but I, I got these for about um, almost two years. I don't really get them anymore. But I had them, like never had them before. Had them yeah. just after. And people had told me there's going to be all this magical stuff or little things happening. So I was kind of looking forward to it. And I had also agreed with her to keep communicating for after when she passes we said yeah let's do it, it could be fun it could be interesting yeah. so we left it open you know but she well, does and have i think the humor. reason why you're no longer getting those very physical things is is because you no longer need them you just know she's there you know and yeah, yeah from a human perspective we want to continuously being fed by that yeah um you know and if it really matters or if it's really important she will let you know but you know they get to a point where you're like yeah you know now that I'm there exactly uh, you know I got other stuff to do um, <laughs> that's not true never never think that they don't have time for you because they can be in different places at the same time but um you know it's but those little messages lifted yeah. my heart from being you know in grieving um, and I think people should look for those little messages. Yeah, I mean, and, it, and it can be sometimes very like, you're like, you know, what was that? Was that a message? Or, you know, sometimes it can start out not being very clear. Um, but I think once you start noticing yourself going, what's that? If you have that feeling like, what's that? That's yeah, already exactly. assigned by itself. That's, it. that's, that's that silly. right there. That response is already assigned it. You're picking up on something that you're not even sure, can't pinpoint it, can't put your finger on it. But because you have that feeling, your team is giving you that feeling. So you would stop and think. There's, yeah. a, there's a sign just in the feeling itself. And I was always alone. I was always alone. So there's something about a one-to-one -one energy connection. And the reason that. I think the reason it usually happens when you're alone is because you don't, you're not distracted. Mm -hmm. It's just you and you're in the moment you were cleaning up you were, that was what you were focused on. Yes. And I think that's important for people to understand is you won't hear spirit. You won't see their signals, their signs, unless you truly live mindfully, you know, mm -hmm. and I've noticed that when I'm too busy with other stuff or I'm like, oh, I still got to do this. I still got to do that. I'm busy with the kids. I'm not hearing them either. But the moment I'm alone and I'm just, let's say I'm just cooking lunch and I'm fully focused on making sure this is a good meal for my kids and my family. 
then I'll sometimes hear my dad like too much salt. You put too much salt in it. Mm -hmm. I didn't teach you it that way. Why aren't you changing it? Now? You know, he'll, he'll complain to me that I'm not doing it his way um, because he taught me, he taught me how to cook. So I, I, I hear them the most. And I've told that several times already on videos when I'm in a shower. And why is that? One, water is a good conductor for energy and spirits don't use voices. They use energy frequency, kind of like a radio signal. You're the radio. The, the music is coming from somewhere else, you know? But yeah, we're the antenna. Picking, yeah, we're, we're, we're picking up on that signal and our bodies try to translate that in some kind of lingo that we can understand. But when you're in a shower, you're just focused on getting washed. You know, or you're just enjoying the hotness of the water. You know, you're just like, oh, it's so blissful. You know, <clears throat> in that moment, you're not thinking about anything else except feeling that water. Boom, you're open for, rece for reception. Boom, there's nothing in the way because. <coughs> Let go. You have to see your thoughts. You know, they don't just stay here. Your thought, imagine that you, everything you ever think about, everything you, you're, you're, feeling everything you're concerned about it's just floating in your space above you and eventually if you're too much in here and too much in here and that mix and that blend and all of that um it's like your space becomes uh, polluted and so the messages are trying to get in but they're bouncing off all the trash that's floating in your in your space just imagine the earth and you have the atmosphere and then you have people go into space and they drop all their junk in space right now around the earth there's space junk everywhere if there comes a time when there's too much space junk you know we're not going to have gps anymore because it's not going to be able to get through anymore it's going to bounce off all the junk that's there that's really how it works with spirit communication you have to clear the junk Become mindful and solely focus on what you're doing at the moment that you're doing it. And then you actually clear that chunk and you actually are open for reception. That's why so many people receive information during their meditation is because they're only focused on one thing, either a mantra or just listening to music or just, you know, counting. Some people count. So that's what meditation is. It's focusing on what you're doing at the moment that you're doing it and nothing else. And so in those moments, a lot of people will get communication very clearly. So, but you can, you know, I, I learned how to live more mindfully and I still have moments where I like, where I'm like totally freaked out. But overall, I try to just keep my attention with what I'm doing. And, um, you know, that's when I started doing that several, so it's a while ago, <laughs> 2000. 14 something like that uh i really was completely obsessed with buddhism and i really you know that was my obsession uh i i stopped working and and all of that and um i basically just took like a year off just to be present with myself just to heal just to get rid of my frustrations and all that and that's when everything started really opening up I, it had always been there but that's when everything became crystal clear um so we when your loved one is passed it's okay to grieve but take moments in your day to just be with your grief that can also be a mind, mindful moment just to allow yourself to feel what you feel and clear your mind because it's in those moments that you'll start to notice that they are still around you and they are trying to you know some people actually feel physically feel somebody touching them or caressing their hair or just feel or there's you you just feel like there's somebody is there somebody next to me but you don't see it you, there's no physical but it's just a knowing yeah. you have to trust those feelings and they will reach out to you if you really want them to physically uh, communicate with you but you need to one believe you need to adjust your belief system because you can only um, experience something that has been made reality into your consciousness. If you truly believe that 
you know, once a loved one is gone, they're gone forever and you're never going to see them again, then that's going to be your experience because your reality in this physical world is a projection of your consciousness. So when you, and, and that's, I think, where you and me are, that's why I think our grieving didn't, you know, it wasn't destructive because the grieving process can be destructive is because we just know. We know and we believe a hundred percent. There's not even a doubt in our mind that they're there and you don't die, you know? And um, there's so many testimonies, you know, near death experiences, so many testimonies out there that can prove that to you. You know, even people who were completely scientific didn't even believe in an afterlife. They go through a death experience, brain dead. You know, actually there was no more, it's that what's that doctor's name i always forget his name this is neuro neurosurgeon who didn't believe in the afterlife and he basically got uh, meningitis in the mind you know meningitis of mm -hmm. some sort and basically his colleagues declared him brain dead and he had a uh, you know a very intense uh, uh near-death experience and actually came back and completely restored which to this day, it's still considered a miracle. Like to even his his colleague neurosurgeons can't explain it, but he can recall everything that was happening around him. Although he is, he couldn't because his brain was was basically flatlined, but still he knows everything. Knows what they said. Knows what they tried. He, he knows everything. So there's so much proof out there. Stop listening to what is accepted narrative and start doing your own research, start doing uh, oh, yeah. inner, your inner search as well, because that's going to help you uh, in the grieving process, because there's not, well, like I said, there's not one spirit out there who wants you to get stuck in the grieving process. Grieving is love who has nowhere to go. That's what grieving is. It is believing that that person is gone. So what do I do with all this love now? And so you hold it in. And it starts to fester inside of you because you want to give it to somebody. But in your mind, that person's no longer there to receive it. And that's what grieving is. That's why it's so painful is because it just festers inside of you. But when we know and we truly believe and we truly feed the, that, the fact that they are not gone. They, they just left their car. Their car broke down. The, sh the driver is still with you can see yep. you, can hear you, can feel you even. And when you continue to talk to them, you know, I talk to my dad as if he's here physically. Yeah. That relationship never ended. It's just mm -hmm. harder to get a response back, but I still tell him about my day. I still tell him about my frustrations. I still I, tell I him think, everything. I'm thinking it all the time. I yeah. Think it. And that's fine too. They can read your mind. They don't, you don't need to express it, but well, I think what helps the grieving process is it grieve, right? When you can just yeah. let it out. Don't grieve, hold it in. let it out, but send your yeah. love. They, yeah. they are there to receive it and they will yeah. send it back to you. You know, let go of holding it in and just talk to them. When a person dies, they are not gone. And I hate that word, they're lost. You know, yeah. we've lost them. No, you have not lost them. You know, they are just uh, temporarily unavailable. They are yeah. on vacation in a beautiful place, having the blast of their life. But there's no phone. There's no Internet. There's no there's no, uh, you know, fax machine. It's just a harder connection. But they're there and you will see them. Again. On that is a channel. promise. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's how I see it is, you know, I know my dad is there, but right now he's just in a, in a place where the reception is not great. You know, <laughs> the phone, the phone lines are not working so great. Um, but that's really how it is in reality. They are always there and they can hear you clear, very clear. Everything you do say, think, feel is they are receiving that. But it's on our end that the disruption is happening because we're in a very low frequency. They are in a very high frequency. And so it's really hard to communicate when you're in two different dimensions. So what happens is when a, 
channel tries to channel a spirit. The spirit tries to lower their frequency. We really have to push our frequencies really high as far as we can without losing our physicality because it, it does put a lot of pressure on the cells. And somewhere in the middle, we try and meet. That's really what's happening. And but, would that be like, can those energies at that, when they get higher and higher, are there even higher frequencies within that dimension or that frequency? Can they even, so they could pass yeah. like intergalactic sort of frequencies, it, you know? Literally, just, you know, you have, you, you doesn't matter where, which frequency they're from, they will find a way to communicate to you, okay. even if it is them um, passing on a message to another another soul and another and really communicating through somebody else they can yeah. do that as well but uh, it, it's complicated I've always asked Eric about all of that and like well okay because when I channeled God for example which is massive frequency um, it took me almost two years just to be able to get a clear connection just to be able to hold the energy because it was so big, I just kept crying. <laughs> the moment I connected, I was like, oh, I can't control my tears. You know, I can't do an interview like this if I'm crying the whole time. So it took me yeah. two years just to be able to maintain the energy. But why is it so intense? Because God source communicates to us by infusing all of the other souls with the information he's trying to pass on to me. So I'm actually receiving energy from infinite amount of souls just to get a communication to to me and so that's why it's so intense it's just a massive amount of energy and our bodies can't contain it that's why we cry when there's too much energy you know people to this day we, scientists cannot explain why we cry it, it, it's very simple when an emotion becomes too intense too expansive the mm -hmm. cells can't hold that energy. If it would try and hold on to that energy, literally your body would explode. Okay. So what needs to happen is it needs to become filtered. And so that's why we cry. It's the body trying to get rid of the excess energy. And so that was my problem with God's source is there was so much energy that I just kept crying, crying, crying because my body couldn't handle it. So it took me very long time just to be able to channel that source. No, well, I want to ask you something because um, when I went to the morgue uh, before we said good, we said goodbye to him. My dad um, getting cremated. Yeah. Um, this is very odd to talk about, but I actually heard a galloping coming from the casket, and really? yeah, and I was like looking at everybody, and it was pretty clear to hear it. And I didn't want to seem crazy or anything. So I didn't say anything to anybody, but I leaned closer to my dad and I heard it. And he was in a wooden, very simple wooden yeah. uh, basket. And uh, so I waited, we said goodbye and everything. And then when I came back for the death certificate or something, I came back to the morgue a week later, I had asked to see that room again, where we were, which was a simple room. I wanted to say to her, this is weird, but I thought I heard something on the other side of the wall just to make sure, like, what, right. what was it, you know? And she said she, we walked around and went to the other side, the other room, and it was, a it was a small room with a coffee maker in there that wasn't even plugged in. And I was thinking, could it have been the coffee maker? But it, that's one of those things with the head tilted. Mm -hmm. And um, I had asked you on a, on a, you know, a channeling session I had with you and you had said he just wanted to say that he was telling me that he loved me. My dad loved me, you know? Yeah. And I, I don't think it was online. a coffee machine. It was a coffee like, machine. I kept, I kept getting, no, no, no. <laughs> and, and I looked up online galloping hearts and sure enough, there's this thing that some people, when they've passed away, but hearts do this galloping thing. I don't know if it's an energy source, if it's been through the ages, it happens every now and then, but maybe it is a way that the souls can signal to someone 
because many different people have had that experience. And I, I, yeah, I mean, um, is it their little way, like if a fish could flap a tail or something, you know, they, they can't speak, but they want to tell you something. So I was mm-hmm. just wondering. I think it's just their know. way of letting you know that they're there, that they're present at the funeral. I think that's I mean, just what it is. Just like, hey, we're here. <laughs> It wasn't a funeral. It was just a private, you know, viewing type thing. But yeah, it was just, you know, just that they're present, I think. That it's, was something that's what it feels I like. Sharing. You know, mm-hmm. I'm just sharing it with people in case, you know, don't question these little signs you get because it, it's them trying to probably communicate to you, you know, that they, and different that's, ways. And that's the trick. Don't question it. Yeah. Just go, okay. Go with the flow. That was weird, so we'll We'll, we'll write that down as a sign. What? <laughs> That's what we so, got to do. You got to keep a little little journal or something. And every yeah. time, you know, a sign book, every time you see something, write it down. Eventually, once you go over, you know, let's say after a week or two and you've gotten a bunch of signs, look over it and you'll see the message that they're trying to, <laughs> to reveal to you. And there you is know? humor. There is yeah. humor. Yeah, because my dad's always, he's always laughing. He's, you know, yeah, most spirits are just like because they're feeling good, you know, and they, yeah. th- you know, they just they just want to know that they're they want us to know that they're there. They want their yeah. presence to be known, and you know, there are so many people who get visits right after somebody dies um, on, in their bed. All of a sudden, their mom or their dad or their uncle or their son is sitting at the end of the bed, and they see him as if he's in physical form he's literally there and then he just they either say we love you or and they just fade away um you know there's so many i mean this is it's not coincidence you know this is not made up there's too many there's millions and millions and millions of people who are having experiences with spirits all we need to learn to do as as a society as a collective a human race is to just accept yeah. That, you know, this is real. And I'm so happy that, you know, scientists are now really looking into that. There's so much research being done right now into the consciousness. They, they are now, scientists are no longer believing that consciousness is stuck to the brain and has nothing to do with the brain. That even if the brain is dead and the heart is stopped, that the consciousness is still very much present. So there's so much going on right now, which is very exciting that, you know, finally they're doing uh, so much research into this afterlife. Um, And also they just discovered uh, two years ago, I think, that we think outside our brains. Like mm. our thoughts are out here. They're not in there. No, and that's that's the thing is the consciousness. We always believe because we have this vehicle that everything's inside of it. But it's not even our soul isn't in here. Our soul is outside of this body. It's actually, this is what uh, Eric once told me. He said, you know, your soul is not inside your body. Your body is inside your soul. So your soul is massive and your body's actually smack in the middle of it, of your soul. Um, Kind of like a puppet. (laughs) That's basically what it is. Like an aura, an aura field, you know, that wherever we go, that's our soul and our energy and people feel it even if you're in a car mm-hmm. near a bus stop you can just look over at someone and they'll turn around and look right at you because their soul knows that our soul is looking at that yeah you know it's like the connection exactly. is there outside of our bodies and we're receptive to it you know and talking about signs maybe another one that's really interesting to mention is spirits will use other people just to get a message to you you know, for example, you're standing at a traffic light. There's a whole bunch of people around you. And you hear these two people talking about something that could be an answer to a question you asked your spirit or to a question you asked your loved one. They use those people to get the answer. So um, don't restrict how you want to receive information. Just be open to receive it in any way or form that it, they feel they can get it to you and then you'll see that the communication uh, actually works a lot more smoother and more freely because the moment we start to restrict everything the moment we say oh i need to hear them with their voice or they need to call me on the phone 
you know, because some spirits will mess with electronics. When I first um, started talking to Eric, I mean, all of my um, fire alarms, and I had about six in the house, upstairs, downstairs, I had three stories. They would all go off at the same time. And then I would yell at them, Eric, stop it. I'm trying to sleep. And then whoop, they would all just go silent, you know, and things like that, you know. So they can manipulate electronics very easily. Um, yeah. I've known people where they kept getting some, the doorbell kept ringing and every time they went, there was nobody there and it would do that five, six times in a row. And they were like, okay, this is, they thought there were kids playing or playing a prank on them, but there's literally nobody there. So on my birthday, I, I walked into a room, I flipped the light on and there's only four spotlights in a small room, Right. Mm -hmm. And they went like opposites, like junk, 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 like a carnival repeating these patterns. Mm -hmm. And I took one step back and I just looked and I wasn't afraid. I was dismayed and like smiling, like (laughs) what is going on here? This was, this is not normal. I never had it before that nor after, but that was my mom. It ended up being my birthday that night. Cause I, I forgot at that moment that in like two hours, it's my birthday. And she was just saying, happy birthday to me. I think what's important just to remember is we all go through death. Uh, we're all going to go through grieving. Uh, you know, the Buddhists say you die every day a little bit. So we just need to learn to see death in a different perspective. It's you're not losing anyone they're not losing you. Um, You guys are just in frequencies that it's harder to communicate, but communication is possible. And so from that human ego, we all want to hold on to the people that we love uh, forever and ever. We all want them close by. We need them. Um, But you have to let go of your own needs and respect the wishes of the soul. The soul wants to go home, let them go home. You know, if you truly love somebody and they are suffering a day in, day out, extreme pain, and they are just holding on just because you don't want to let them go, think about that. That's a very selfish thing to do. You know, don't judge a person because they want to go home. They want to, you know, in Belgium, they have a thing called euthanasia where you can choose if you're you know um you cannot be cured you're in incredible pain you can choose you know to euthanize yourself some people think that's selfish no you're selfish for not allowing them to have peace for not allowing them to not feel pain anymore um Mm -hmm. we have to switch that and the only reason we don't want to let go of people is because of our needs but we never think about the soul's need. And so we need to switch that. That needs to be switched. And when we let go of the fear of death and we understand that it's just, see you later. I'll see you in a little bit. That's all it is. You're not going to miss them. Okay. They're not going to disappear. You're going to see them for sure. If it's just, see you later, then it becomes easier to bear. It becomes easier to carry that law that that missing it's more of a missing we're missing their presence their physical presence Mm -hmm. and so we are easier to let go of the grief and eventually move into a new chapter where you still have a relationship with the person who is deceased but you're at the same time and trying to make the best out of your life so they can enjoy it with you as well Mm -hmm. because when you're in pain and you're grieving and you're allowing your grief to become your new reality, your new future, then spirits also are constantly trying to work with you. Go, no, 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 no. That's not what you're supposed to do. No, 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 no. So you're putting your loved one in distress as well. You know, not like they are here in in the human world, but they don't want to see you in distress for the rest of your life. That's not what they want. They want you to enjoy your life and make the best of it. So when you guys re-meet, when you guys reunite and get, 
wow, you did a good job at, at, at enjoying yourself there. You did a good job at following your heart and following your dreams. So holding on to your grief does not do them justice. They want you to live your life to the fullest and have every experience that you designed yourself to have even after their going home party. And you can you can pray for them to help you in things and they do. Yeah. Oh, you don't I've even have to even, ask. Even, they will help you. Even you know? financially, like I've prayed for things that have come mm-hmm. through or even health-wise or mm-hmm. uh for other things in life, I'll just say, could you make this possible or could this be good for me or you know whatever, you just pray and they're almost like split second now it's it's so fast they can help you if you fully believe it you have to really believe it that's, that's the where thing. it comes from you can't fake yourself like i'm gonna you just have to fully you have, income. you have to incorporate it into your reality and yeah. if you infuse that knowing that they are still there which they are absolutely i mean this is to me that's not even the question because I communicate to them on a daily basis. So yeah. I know they're there. Um, when you infuse that belief system or that, that knowing into your belief system, then it'll only enhance your relationship you had with that person because you're now on a much more intimate, much more spiritually connected uh, relationship because <laughs> You can't hide anymore. They know everything. They everything. feel everything. So no more hiding. <laughs> you know, so it's much more intimate, that relationship, um, than, it will, than it was in physical form. So embrace the reinvention of the relationship um, and embrace the knowing that they walk alongside you every day, every minute, every time you think of them, they're like, yep, what's going on? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here. And they love you. They love you. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, um, even if you've had a bad relationship with a person, let's say you had a bad relationship with your mom, just an example. Um, maybe, you know, there was a destructive relationship. Maybe one was a narcissist or I don't know, whatever it may be. We there are people we have bad relationships with and then somebody passes and then we feel bad because we weren't able to you know to heal that relationship the healing will take place after that person transitions okay you can still together you guys will heal you guys will find forgiveness you guys will find unconditional love so once the spirit crosses over they let go of all that anger and they let go of the illusion of i need control over you you know because that's what narcissists are all about i need control over the person uh, in front of me they let go of that and they actually become a more uh, fuller version of themselves and they will have understand they will have understood with their life's review, how it affected you, because they will have experienced your, everything you felt when you, when you talk to your mom, they will now have experienced that as well in their life's review. So they will have gotten a whole new perspective on what happened between you and therefore the healing can start, you see? So even if you had a bad relationship, know that that relationship can be recreated reinvented because now the spirit is looking at it from a whole different angle and is going to be there to help you and support you and then it's up to you to decide in this human form do i want that their help at this time or do i want to still continue to stay angry or continue to hold on to that negativity that is a choice and that's you can do that that's absolutely fine um, you know, there's no judgment here. There's no judgment from above, but up above, and there's no judgment from us. Um, we are all, we all have choices to make in life. And we all have to understand that every choice has a reaction and an outcome attached to it. So, um, but either way, when you go home, you will have learned, you will have expanded as a soul, and you will have created experiences that'll then help you to determine or give you more insight on who you are as an entity uh, yourself. So either you way, it's, to, it's all valuable. Yeah, you almost have to forgive them and 
no matter what they did or whatever, give uh, mm. this feeling of forgiveness and acceptance. Mm. And they're doing the same on the other side, you could say. That's the way I feel. It's kind of a neutral zone of letting go, accepting and forgiving. And yeah. I think that they probably are looking back at us the same way. And it's kind of like a merged energy of equality there. Mm -hmm. If you allow it to happen, that could heal you and heal them. Yeah. And forgiveness, you know, if, even if you, forgiveness is not agreeing with what the other person did to you or not saying, hey, it's okay that you've harmed me in such a way. Forgiveness is saying, it's okay for me to let go of that negative energy, those negative uh, exactly. vibrations that have affected me my entire life because I deserve peace. And, you know, they deserve peace knowing that, you know, now they know what it yeah. felt like to me. So it's okay. We're yeah. now seeing eye to eye. We're now seeing eye to eye because they exactly. crossed over and they know what you went through. So it's yeah. a whole different ball game from now on. So let it go. Don't let it eat you up. Don't hold on to it because it does affect you. Even if you think that you've tucked it away very far in the corner of your bottom drawer and you don't ever look at it, if you don't let it go, it's, it's like it piggybacks on you. It's like an extra backpack that you're carrying it, with you. It's like a, a I, I don't want to say the word, but it's like an illness around you in your, in your space you don't need. Yeah, because it always leads to some kind of manifestation. And mm -hmm. it's usually illness when we don't let go um, yeah. or relation, other relationships falling apart. And on a subconscious level, it always affects everything that we do and how we are and our physical health as well. So it's good to clear, clear out the closet from time to time, let go, forgive and move forward. Focus on what's important. Focus on what makes you happy. And always follow your highest excitement in life. And that's how you're going to smile. Attract smile that. Inside. Yeah. Smile therapy. It is really good. I swear, <laughs> smile before you sleep. Smile. Smile. All right. No. It, you know, just embrace love and embrace life and embrace your heart no matter. And understand that no matter what people do to you or how they hurt you, uh, they don't define you. But this entity doesn't define you either. It's just an experience. This lifetime, it's mm -hmm. just a, from a spiritual perspective, a, a glimpse, a blimp. I mean, it's like blink and the life is over. From us, it seems like an eternity down here. But up there, it's like blink, next life, blink, next life. <laughs> so, you know, again, it all depends on perspectives and um as long as you know that this is just an experience and it doesn't define you as a soul mm -hmm. um, and other people don't define you no matter what they do or no matter what they say, you're the one who decides who you want to be, who you are. You know who you are. Um, and any, any loved one who crosses over now knows who you are as well because they have a better insight now in everything. So um, embrace them, embrace your deceased loved ones and see them as extra support. They are now extra angels watching over you, helping you, assisting you. Even if you don't hear them, they are. They are helping you in very invisible ways, but they are making sure that the right person gets sent to you and this person, or they're making sure that you you don't hear your alarm clock and you sleep in and then you're frustrated because you get to work late, but they know that if you would have gotten up in time, you would have gotten into that accident and that would have not been good for you. Embrace that everything happens for a reason, even if we as a human being do not like it. And yes. that includes losing disconnecting temporarily from people. That's what we should really call it. <laughs> yeah. We're not losing them. We're just temporarily unavailable for communication. Yes. They're on vacation. You will see them soon and join them soon as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. I well, a good I think that's a good way to end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I 
I hope you guys got something out of this. We are just spitballing back and forth. We yeah. are just sharing what we think, what we feel, whatever comes up. Um, let us know if you enjoyed this. Let us know if you want to continue doing this. Um, I know I had fun. Did you have fun? Yes, a blast. I probably talked too much again. <laughs> no, I'm already thinking of other subjects. All right. Well, from Judith and I, we'll yeah. see you later. Bye.